Find the basic initial feasible solution to the following transportation problem using the northwest corner method, least cost method and the Vogel's approximation method. So in this example we have been given three plants P1, P2, P3 and four warehouses W1, W2, W3 and W4. Now these three plants have a supply availability of 7,000, 9,000 and 18,000 units while the warehouses have a demand of 5,000, 8,000, 7,000 and 14,000 units respectively. Now these demands at these warehouses have to be met by transporting the material from these three plants such that the supply and demand constraints at these plants and the warehouses are not violated. Now we have also been given the transportation cost of shipping one unit of material from these plants to these warehouses. For example, for shipping one unit of material from P1 to W1, the cost is 21 rupees. Similarly, for shipping material from P1 to W2, the cost is 32 rupees per unit and so on. So we have to find out the basic initial feasible solution for this transportation problem using all the three methods which is the northwest corner method, the least cost method and the Vogel's approximation method. And then we'll compare these three methods. Now the first step is to formulate the transportation table. In this step we have to express the supply from origins which in this case are the three plants. The requirements at destination which in our case are the four warehouses and the cost of shipping from origins to destinations which in our case are these numbers in black in the form of a matrix. So this is the matrix which is also the transportation table. Now a check needs to be done to find out if the total supply and demand are equal. If yes the problem is said to be balanced and if not then we have to add a dummy origin or destination to balance the supply and demand. So let's first add the supply. So 18 plus 9 is 27 and 27 plus 7 is 34. So the total of supply is 34,000. For demand, 14 plus 7 is 21, 21 plus 8 is 29 and 29 plus 5 is 34. So supply and demand are both same and equal to 34,000. So in our case the transportation table is balanced. Now let's proceed to the various methods to establish the initial feasible solution. So first we'll use the northwest corner method to establish the initial feasible solution. So the first step in the northwest corner method is to select the northwest corner square as the starting point. So this side is north and this side is west. So the northwest corner square is this one P1W1. So for this square the next step is then to compare the figure of the supply and demand and allocate the units equal to supply or demand whichever is lower. So P1 has a supply availability of 7000 units while W1 has a demand of 5000 units. So the maximum we can allocate here to P1 W1 is 5000 units. Now with this allocation the entire demand of W1 has been met so the remaining demand is now zero while for P1 
the supply availability now after this allocation is 7000 minus 5000 which is 2000 units so now since the entire demand for w1 has been met however p1 is still having some supply availability so we'll move to the square to the right and try to allocate as much as possible so here we are moving to the right because we are continuing with the initial plant and the warehouse which was p1w1 so for w1 the entire demand has been met however p1 still has some unallocated supply so we'll continue with p1 until it is completely exhausted so now let's move to the square p1w2 so for p1w2 let's evaluate the supply and demand situation so p1 has a supply availability of 2000 units while w2 has a demand of 8000 units so w2 has a demand of 8000 units however p1 can supply only 2000 units so the maximum we can allocate to p1 w2 is 2000 units so now with this allocation the unsatisfied demand for w2 is now 8000 minus 2000 which is 6000 units while the supply has been completely exhausted so the supply availability remaining now is zero units so we were on the square p1 w2 now p1 has been completely allocated however w2 is still remaining so let's move to the square down which is p2 w2 so that we can completely exhaust the demand of w2 now for p2w2 let's evaluate the supply and demand situation so w2 has a remaining demand of 6000 units while p2 has a supply availability of 9000 units so the maximum we can allocate to p2w2 is 6000 units now with this allocation the entire demand at w2 has been met so the remaining demand is zero units while the remaining supply availability is now 9000 minus 6000 which is 3000 units so now w2 has been completely allocated however p2 still has some availability so let's move to the square on the right side which is p2 w3 so let's evaluate the supply and demand situation here now p2 has a supply availability of 3000 units while w3 has a demand of 7000 units so the maximum we can allocate here is 3000 units so with this allocation the remaining demand at w3 is 7000 minus 3000 which is 4000 units while the supply availability at p2 is now 3000 minus 3000 which is zero units now since p2 has been completely allocated however w3 still has some demand to be met so we'll continue with the allocation for w3 and move to the square below p2 w3 which is p3 w3 now for this square let's evaluate the supply and demand situation so w3 has a remaining demand of 4000 units while p3 has a supply availability of 18000 units so the maximum we can allocate to p3 w3 is 4000 units now with this allocation the unsatisfied demand at w3 becomes zero while the supply availability at p3 becomes 18000 minus 4000 which is 14000 units now since the demand at w3 has been completely met however p3 still has some unallocated supply so we'll move to the square to the right side of p3 w3 which is p3 w4 now let's evaluate the supply and demand situation for this square so p3 has a supply availability of 14000 units while w4 has a demand of 14000 units as well 
So we can allocate 14,000 units to this square. So with this allocation, the demand remaining at W4 is zero, while the supply availability at P3 also becomes zero. So this is the initial basic feasible solution that we have obtained using the Northwest Corner method. Now let's calculate the total cost obtained by using this method. So the total cost will be equal to 5000 multiplied by 21. So this is for this square P1 W1, 5000 units are being shipped from P1 to W1 and the unit cost of shipping from P1 to W1 is 21 rupees. So the total cost will be 5000 multiplied by 21 plus 2000 multiplied by 32 plus 6000 multiplied by 32 plus 3000 multiplied by 42 plus 4000 multiplied by 72 plus 14,000 multiplied by 22. So 21 multiplied by 5 is 105. So 105 and then three zeros. Plus 32 multiplied by 2 is 64. And three zeros. Plus 32 multiplied by 6. So six twos are 12, one carry over, six threes are 18, plus one 19, and then three zeros, plus 42 multiplied by three, so three twos are six, and three fours are 12, and then three zeros, plus 72 multiplied by four, so four twos are eight, and seven fours are 28, and then three zeros, plus 14 multiplied by 22. So 14 twos are 28, two carry over. 14 twos are 28 plus to 30, and then three zeros. So this is equal to 1083000 rupees. Now let's proceed to the least cost method. So this is the transportation table given in this example. Now the first step in the least cost method is to evaluate the transportation cost and select the square with the lowest cost. So the cost is given in this black color. So the lowest transportation cost is 10 for the square P3W2. So we'll select this square first. Now the next step is depending upon the supply and demand condition allocate the maximum possible units to the square having the lowest cost. So for P3W2, the supply availability is 18,000 units while the demand is for 8,000 units. So the maximum that can be allocated is 8,000 units. So with this allocation now, the remaining demand at W2 is 0 units, while the remaining supply availability at P3 is 18,000 minus 8,000 units, which is 10,000 units. Now since W2 has been completely allocated, that is the entire demand has been met, we will cross off the remaining squares for W2 indicating that they are no longer available for allocation. Now let's again evaluate the remaining squares and find out the square with the lowest cost. So the next lowest cost is 12 which is for P1W4. So let's now select this square. Now let's evaluate the supply and demand condition. So P1 has a supply availability of 7000 units 
while W4 has a demand of 14,000 units. So here we can allocate 7,000 units. Now with this allocation, the supply availability at P1 becomes zero, while the remaining demand for W4 is 14,000 minus 7,000, which is 7,000 units. Now since the entire supply for P1 has been allocated, we'll cross off the remaining boxes, indicating that they are no longer available for allocation. Now let's again evaluate the remaining squares to find out the square with the lowest cost. So the next lowest cost is 22, which is for the square P3W4. So let's now select this one. Now let's evaluate the supply and demand condition here. So P3 has a supply availability of 10,000 units, while W4 has a demand of 7,000 units. So we can allocate 7,000 units here. So now with this allocation, the remaining demand at W4 becomes zero, while the remaining supply availability at P3 becomes 3000 units. Now since the entire demand for W4 has been met, we'll cross off the remaining squares indicating that they are no longer available for allocation. Now let's again evaluate the remaining squares to find out the square with the lowest cost. So we have a tie here between P2W3 and P3W1. Both have a cost of 42. So let's arbitrarily select any one of them. So let's select P3W1 first. Now let's evaluate the supply and demand situation for P3W1. So P3 has a supply availability of 3000 units while W1 has a demand of 5000 units. So the maximum we can allocate is 3000 units. Now with this allocation, the supply availability at P3 becomes zero, while the remaining demand at W1 is now 2000 units. Now since the entire supply for P3 has been allocated, we'll cross off the unallocated boxes for P3, indicating that they are no longer available for allocation. Now let's again evaluate the remaining squares to find out the one which has the lowest cost. So P2W3 has the lowest cost now. Let's evaluate the supply and demand situation for P2W3. So W3 has a demand of 7,000 units while P2 has a supply availability of 9,000 units. So the maximum we can allocate here is 7,000 units. So with this allocation, the entire demand for W3 is met, while the supply availability remaining for P2 is now 9,000 minus 7,000, which is 2,000 units. Now for W3, the demand is completely met, and all the squares for W3 are either allocated or crossed off. So we are good here. Now we only have one square, which is not allocated yet, which is P2W1. So let's evaluate the supply demand situation. So P2 has a supply availability of 2000 units while W1 has a demand of 2000 units as well. So let's allocate the entire 2000 units here. So now the remaining supply for P2 is zero units while the demand is also now zero units. So now with this allocation, we have completed all the allocations. Now let's find out the total cost that we have achieved using the least cost method. So total cost is equal to 7000 multiplied by 12 plus 2000 multiplied by 72 plus 7000 multiplied by 42 plus 3000 multiplied by 42 
plus 8000 multiplied by 10 plus 7000 multiplied by 22. So let me pull my calculator here. So 7000 multiplied by 12 plus 2000 multiplied by 72 plus 7000 multiplied by 42 plus 3000 multiplied by 42 plus 8000 multiplied by 10 plus 7000 multiplied by 22 is 882,000 so the total cost is equal to 882,000 rupees so definitely there is a lot of improvement from the cost that we have achieved using the northwest corner method we have been able to reduce the cost considerably now let's use the Vogel's approximation method to find out the basic initial feasible solution for this transportation problem. Now in Vogel's approximation method, the first step is to calculate the difference between the two minimum elements for each row and each column. So let's start with the first row. So the lowest cost is 12 and the next lowest is 21. So 21 minus 12 which is 9. For the second row the lowest is 32 and the next lowest is 42 so 42 minus 32 which is 10 and for the third row the lowest is 10 and the next lowest is 22 so 22 minus 10 which is 12 now let's move to the columns so for the first column the lowest is 21 and the next lowest is 42 so 42 minus 21 is 21 for the second column the lowest is 10 and the next lowest is 32 so 32 minus 10 which is 22 for the third column the lowest is 42 and the next lowest is 52 so 52 minus 42 is 10 and for the fourth column the lowest is 12 and the next lowest is 22 so 22 minus 12 is again 10 now the next step is to select the row or column with the largest difference. So W2 has the largest difference of 22. So the next step is to allocate the maximum number of units to the square with the minimum cost in the selected row or column. So the square with the minimum cost is P3W2. So let's evaluate the supply and demand situation here. Now P3 has a supply availability of 18,000 units while W2 has a demand of 8000 units. So the maximum we can allocate to P3 W2 is 8000 units. Now with this allocation the entire demand for W2 is met. So the remaining demand is zero while the supply availability for P3 reduces by 8000. So the supply availability is now 10,000 units. Now since the entire demand for W2 has been met, we'll cross off the remaining boxes for W2 indicating that they are no longer available for allocation. Now let's again find out the opportunity cost for the remaining rows and columns. So we'll start with the first row again. The lowest is 12 and the next lowest is 21. So the opportunity cost is 9 which is 21 minus 12. For the second row the lowest is now 42 while the second lowest is 62. So the opportunity cost is 62 minus 42 which is 20. In case of P3 the lowest is now 22 and the next lowest is 42. So the opportunity cost is 42 minus 22 which is 20. For the columns 
for the first column the lowest is 21 and the next lowest is 42 so the opportunity cost is still the same which is 21 we can skip the second column because it has been completely allocated for the third column the lowest is 42 and the next lowest is 52 so the opportunity cost is 52 minus 42 which is 10 in case of the fourth column the lowest is 12 and the next lowest is 22 so the opportunity cost is 22 minus 12 which is 10 now let's select the row or column with the highest opportunity cost so the first column W1 has the highest opportunity cost now let's allocate the maximum number of units to the square with the minimum cost in the selected column so the square with the lowest cost for this column is P1 W1 so let's evaluate the supply and demand situation for this square P1 has a supply availability of 7000 units while W1 has a demand of 5000 units so the maximum we can allocate is 5000 units here so with this allocation the entire demand for W1 has been met so the remaining demand is zero while the supply availability for P1 is now 7000 minus 5000 which is 2000 units now since the entire demand for W1 has been met we will cross off the remaining boxes for W1 indicating that they are no longer available for allocation now let's again find out the opportunity cost for the remaining rows and columns so starting row wise again so for the first row lowest is now 12 and the next lowest is 52 so opportunity cost is 52 minus 12 which is 40 for the second row 62 minus 42 which is 20 for the next row 22 and 72 so 72 minus 22 is 50 now column wise the first column is entirely allocated so we'll skip this the second column is also entirely allocated so we'll skip this as well for the third column the lowest is 42 and the next lowest is 52 so opportunity cost is 10 for the fourth column the lowest is 12 and the next lowest is 22 so the opportunity cost is 22 minus 12 which is 10 now the next step is to select the row or column with the largest opportunity cost so p3 has the largest opportunity cost of 50 so now let's allocate the maximum number of units to the square with the minimum cost in the selected row or column so for this row which is p3 the lowest cost is 22 so we'll select this square here now let's evaluate the supply and demand situation so the supply availability is 10,000 units while the demand is 14,000 units so the maximum we can allocate here is 10,000 units so now with this allocation the remaining demand for W4 is 4,000 units while the remaining supply for P3 is zero units now since with this allocation the entire supply for p3 has been allocated we'll cross off the remaining boxes for p3 indicating that they are no longer available for allocation now for the remaining boxes let's again find out the opportunity cost let's start row wise so for the first row the opportunity cost is the same which is 52 minus 12 of 40 for the second row it is 62 minus 42 which is 20 for the third row the third row has been completely allocated so we can ignore this one same with the first and the second column we can ignore because it has been completely allocated for the third column the lowest is 42 and the next lowest is 52 so opportunity cost is 10 for the fourth column the lowest is 12 and the next lowest is 62 so the opportunity cost is 62 minus 12 which is 50 
Now next we select the row or column with the largest difference. So we'll select W4 here. And then we have to allocate the maximum number of units to the square with the minimum cost in the selected row or column. So we'll select the square P1W4. Now let's evaluate the supply and demand situation here. So P1 has a supply availability of 2000 units while W4 has a demand of 4000 units. So the maximum we can allocate here is 2000 units. So with this allocation the supply for P1 has been completely allocated so the remaining supply is zero while the demand at W4 now becomes 2000 units. So now since the entire supply for P1 has been allocated Let's cross off the remaining boxes for P1, indicating that they are no longer available for allocation. Now, in this entire transportation table, we only have one row which has two squares. Neither of the other rows nor the other columns have two squares to compare the cost to find the opportunity cost. So let's take this column P2 and let's select this. So now we have to allocate the maximum number of units to the square with the lowest cost in this row, which is P2W3. Let's evaluate the supply and demand situation. So P2 can supply 9000 units while W3 can take only 7000 units. So the maximum we can allocate here is 7000 units. Now with this allocation the entire demand for W3 is met while the supply availability at P2 is 2000 units. Now here since all the remaining boxes for W3 are crossed off we don't have to cross off any other boxes. Now the last box which is unallocated and not crossed off is P2W4. So let's evaluate the supply and demand situation here. So W4 has a demand of 2000 units while P2 has a supply availability of 2000 units. So the allocation will be for 2000 units. And with this allocation the demand at W4 becomes zero while the supply availability at P2 also becomes zero. So with this allocation we have completed all allocations for the supply and demand. Now let's find out the total cost that we have achieved using the Vogel's approximation method. So the total cost will be equal to 5000 multiplied by 21 which is for the first allocation plus 2000 multiplied by 12 plus 7000 multiplied by 42 plus 2000 multiplied by 62 plus 8000 multiplied by 10 plus 10000 multiplied by 22 so let me pull the calculator here so 5000 multiplied by 21 plus 2000 multiplied by 12 plus 7000 multiplied by 42 plus 2000 multiplied by 62 plus 8000 multiplied by 10 plus 10000 multiplied by 22 enter so the total cost using the Vogel's approximation method is 847000 rupees So using the Vogel's approximation method, the total cost was 847000. Using the least cost method, the total cost was 882000. And using the northwest corner method, the total cost was 1083000 rupees. So definitely the Vogel's approximation method has given the best solution. Each of these is rupees.
So let us compare the allocations that we made using these three methods. So let me place the allocations here for both least cost method as well as northwest corner method. So let me use this red pen for the northwest corner method. So using the northwest corner method, we allocated 5000 units to the first square. Then we allocated 2000 units to the second one. Then 6000 units to P2W2. Then 3000 units to P2W3. Then 4000 units to P3W3. and 14,000 units to P3W4. Now let me use this blue ink to indicate the least cost method allocations. So the first allocation in the first row was P1W4 for 7,000 units. Then P2W1 for 2,000 units. then P2W3 for 7,000 units, then P3W1 for 3,000 units, then P3W2 for 8,000 units, and then P3W4 for 7,000 units. So we have already put the allocation for the Vogel's approximation method in black color. So Vogel's approximation method allocation is in black. So if you observe, you will find the differences between the way these three methods have made the allocations. Now the Northwest corner method completely ignores the cost component. It just starts from the Northwest corner square and just keeps on proceeding towards the other end. The closest in the allocations could be the least cost method and the Vogel's approximation method. So let's compare these two allocations for the Vogel's approximation method and the least cost method. Now the first row has the allocation for least cost method only in the P1W4 square, which is for 7,000 units while the Vogel's approximation method allocated 2000 units to W4 and 5000 units to P1W1. Now again, if you look at the lowest cost for P1, it is 12. So that's why the lowest cost method allocated the entire supply to this square. However, the Vogel's approximation method split this between this square which has the cost of 12 and the next square which has the cost of 21. Now let's move to the next row. So the least cost method allocated 2000 units to P2W1. Now the Vogel's approximation method avoided allocating to P2W1 because the cost is too high of 72. So it compromised on the difference of 9 between this 21 and 12 by allocating sum to the square with the higher cost for this first row and thereby avoided allocating to this square P2W1 which has a cost of 72. Now let's proceed. So P2 there is another allocation for 7000 units and here it is the same for both least cost method and the Vogel's approximation method. And if you look at this, the Vogel's approximation method allocated 2000 to the square P2W4. And again, that is because it allocated lesser to the square with the lowest cost of 12. While the least cost method had to allocate this 2000 to the square with a cost of 72. 
Now for the third row again, the least cost method had to allocate to this square P3W1 where the cost is 42 while the Vogel's approximation method allocated entire 5000 to P1W1 which has a cost of 21 only. Now the next square has the same allocation between the Vogel's approximation method and the least cost method. And in the end, the least cost method allocated 7000 units to P3W4 which has a cost of 22 while allocating the remaining 3000 to P3W1 which has a cost of 42 whereas the Vogel's approximation method allocated the entire 10,000 to this square P3W4 which has a cost of 22. And because of these differences in the way allocations are made using the least cost method and the Vogel's approximation method, you can see that the cost for Vogel's approximation method is lower than that of the least cost method.